I'll see what's going on outside. Hey, police! Hey, stop them! They're getting away! You'll just have to come with us, that's all. Hey, police! What's going on here then? Smash and grab! Oh, what, another one? The door's happening around here. It is the Solar One Sci-Fi Podcast. Hello, this is the Solar One Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm Michael Ball. I think this is episode 178. We well, should check that before starting. Um, we are on a very special show today. Um, Martin and I have been on hiatus for about the last three or four weeks because we've had all sorts of things going on our ends, and we decided to have a break. But somebody has come to the rescue. Somebody I've known for a very, lo- very long time. Although I didn't know he was into a lot of stuff that I was into until about a couple of years ago. And that is, also from London, it's Malcolm Patterson. Hello, Malcolm. Hello, hello, how you doing? All right, matey. Thanks for joining me. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. So it's an interesting one here because I don't know when we got in touch with um, knowing when you're into sort of stuff that we're into. But I I mean, you've been following the podcast for quite a while and, um, you know, you're a person of... You know, strong opinions of certain things sometimes, which always makes for an amusing interaction. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's quite weird because when I'm watching it, I then tend to send you messages for stuff I don't agree with because <laughs> I forget that you're not recording it there and then. So we can't interact, but this time I can't avoid it. If there's something that you're not happy with, you'll, I can't escape you today, so that, that'll be fine. Um, so first of all, I mean, we are going to review a mo- actually two movies in a series. Um, from the 60s and um basically they are doctor who but they're not doctor who they are almost like an alternate different universe of doctor who no, nothing canon with the original se- or the actual original series or new who and starring peter cushing and that is of course doctor who and the daleks and dalek invasion 2150 ad which i thought would be a good one to review but before we actually review that um let's just quickly talk about anything in science fiction that you've been watching anything you recommend what are you been sort of like focusing on recently? Anything you could suggest that we should check, check uh, out? So, so I massively binged for all mankind. I thought I've still not seen season series. four yet. Season, yeah, yeah, season, yeah four. season four is well worth seeing. I have seen a rumor unconfirmed on the in season five. It jumps forty three years ahead. So you're basically there will be no cast that you've seen. It'll be a completely new show. But that was one of the notoriously rumor mill sites uh, right. there that said that. Okay. So um, it's, it's, um, it's, 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 delaying. I was going to say it is an unusual show because most shows they don't jump ahead like a decade per season, which I think it makes it gives it a sort of advantage over other shows in some ways. Yeah, plus the very beginning of each season, from you've got to really carefully watch the opening bit and the, it flicks through the newspaper thing so fast. Mm. I mean, I, luckily, IMDb, I think most people have listed all the stuff that's happened on yeah. that, so you don't have to sit there with your pause button continually going, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else? I watched watch Silo. Silo is, is good. I'm going to check that out. I'm going to check that out. One, one of the, one of the, one of the things me and my wife loved about that is TV now is for us is so predictable. I mean, we literally sit watching TV shows going, he's the bad guy. He's going to stitch him up. They're going to shag in a minute. You know, they're this. <laughs> he's going to, he's going to betray him. He's not going to go to, and, and it's just like, it's almost boring. The ending of the first season of Silo, I know it's based on a book. So people who've read the book know how it ends. Oh, right. okay. The ending, we definitely 100% did not see coming. Okay, that it's sounds really interesting. We, okay. we had our ideas of how it was going to end, but it did not end in any way like we thought it would. No, and that was okay. really good. Yeah. Um, um, I've been watching the new Walking Dead series, the the the, uh, the Ones Who Live. Are you into Walking yeah, Dead? Yeah, I just... Um, so, so I watched Walking Dead when it first came out, yay. Uh-huh. Um, and then we got up until the point where he is he has his meeting with the governor. You know, the oh, that's season eye. two. Yeah, yeah. The eye patch, forget who plays the part, but yeah, the, uh, yeah. the one eye. And um, we, 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 by that point, we were just bored of tears. We we stopped watching it for years. Okay. And then we went back to it, and we watched it up until the cliffhanger was when was when um, was when the, the Negan bashes oh the, the um, asian guy's head yeah in. yeah that's the beginning of season um, six, again whose name is. escapes me yeah, uh, yeah and yeah. then we watch the next season after that which i think ends with the tiger attacking the bloke and then <laughs> joining forces yeah yeah and then we've never gone back to it because every season of walking dead is exactly the same 
oh, we found somebody, oh, we can live happily ever after here, oh, now we're being attacked, oh, no. And every time, you have to have a worse villain than you had before. Yeah, yeah, so I mean... Get, you know, they go through them, or they go through the governor, who was a shit, he was a, a, a really bad villain. And then mm. you get into the cannibal people, and then we get to Negan's people. And let's face it, the heroes of this aren't exactly fucking heroes themselves. No, no, so you've got to have villains that are even this, worse yeah. than them. Yeah, which to, is, to which win. Is, which is going some. Yeah. I and mean, yeah, we just lost heart with it. Are you, you amazed, had a, though? I mean, there are literally about five, there's about six or seven series now, different shows. There is yeah, Fear the Walking yeah. Dead. There is the Daryl Dixon one. There's the one where they, with Negan uh, goes to New York. Um, Dead City, I think it was called. There's a Short Tales one as well. There's loads. It is, yeah. it is excessive. I mean, I there, there like are it, questions though. I have with the whole apocalyptic thing. Is The first and foremost one is who the fuck's mowing all the lawns? You know, that many years of no one really doing anything, plant life would have overtaken everything. Ah, the the, ah, the ah. grass would be 10 foot deep and, but, and what have but, you. Uh, but the thing is, though, it started in 2010 and it's still going with contemporary times. So now a lot of the buildings and a lot of the cities are falling to bits, which I like. Okay. I like that. Um, it's a the bit the like other a, bit is, go on. you've got so few people spread out over such a massive area, like the entire planet. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure that the human race is at a tenable level anymore to carry on. They would just be, not enough people are having kids, so it would just be dying out. And there's a there's a just a quickly change there's another series we just started watching with jason momoa called c oh yeah which, um it's oh, worth jason, watching man. the, the concept of that is a disease again wipes out i think i think all but two million people and the people oh, that are left I are blind love those sort of shows i mean I yeah, like... the, people, the people that are left are all blind so you have to so first of all like it's a great trippies, show like they're the trippies, but you, yeah they're you've got a question why they're wearing decorative i mean it's jumped two thousand years the entire planet has been blind for two thousand years so why are they all still wearing decorative robes and earrings and who's doing the carefully orchestrated scars on their faces they're all blind sounds, who's sounds building good, all their houses sounds interesting but, but again two million people spread across the entire globe i'm i, I don't know if it's definite i'm not sight but i don't think that's a tenable number of people to keep the planet going I don't think it is. It's two amounts spread out. I think you need something like 500 people in one area just to keep to, it. To actually going. make the whole all work together. Yeah. As, but then as obviously the, the human race started with smaller numbers anyway and went on. So who knows? Yeah, I mean, it, it, makes, mean it, it makes me think about the population explosion because I think we're actually up to about 8 billion people on the planet. And only yeah, I think it's closer to ago, 9. Yeah, only a few years ago it was 7. I mean, yeah. I, I, I find it quite alarming, quite frankly. because Yeah, well, that 9, that. So, so the... I think the workable limit for the planet is four billion, so we're already twice that, and yeah. that figure is is predicted to double twice in your lifetime. Well, they said that. It, so I mean, be, that's, these people say that it's supposed to be flattening out, and it's actually going to go down. I'm, I'm a bit dubious about that personally. I don't yeah, know whether they're just saying. I, that. I, I don't see it myself. You know what I mean? I mean, unless there's some yeah. apocalyptic thing. As, as as China proved suddenly reducing the number of people being born does not change the figure at all when you get yeah. to a certain point there are yeah. too many yeah I know. so even con even confining everybody to one child each didn't slow their production down at all yeah yeah it's not good well in the end there's not much we can do we can just have time let's not make this a doom and gloom podcast though no, we're, no, we are no. here to talk about doctor who let's and talk about things. giant metal rock soldier yeah exactly so shall we go into our folks of the week let's yeah of course, of course here we go It's the Solar Sci-Fi Focus of the Week. All right, then. So this uh, is one of two films starring Peter Cushing. Oh, I've actually got to turn up while I'm actually um, just writing it. Um, it. These are films I saw. They used to be shown like on DC2, sort of like in the, uh, on the weekend in the evening or something like that. I mean, obviously, Doctor Who is a BBC production. Um, but um, these films were to make money because the Daleks were such a big thing. So while I actually um, talk about that and get some information up about it, what do you think about the first of the two films? Did you like these films? Um, yes and no. Yes and no. For what it was, it was okay. As a Doctor Who thing, not so much. Um, I'm, I'm almost certain, because this would have been on TV when I was a kid and VHS videos hadn't come out yet to watch the old ones, I'm pretty certain I saw this before I saw the William Hartnell one. Really? Almost so, yeah. And of course, um, Almost, uh, these these two films are based on two stories of the original William Hartnell era. 
obviously Doctor Who and the Daleks, which has recently just been colourised, which I thought was quite good. Um, and also, of course, the um, Doctor Who and the Daleks. Um, I don't know the episode was, what's the episode called, the original episode? With these Dalek Invasion of Earth. Dalek Invasion of Earth, Dalek Invasion of Earth that's it. Um, and then, like I said, um, these two films were made in 1965 and 1966. Um, they were obviously both based on, the, obviously the second one was made. Do, which one do you prefer, out of interest? Do, do you have a preference out of um, the two movies? I think the second one is yeah. better. I think but then I also first. think in the old Hartnell things, Invasion of Earth is better than, is better than the Daleks, yeah. to be fair. It's the one I watched, when I had them on VHS, it was the one I watched the most. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, it's quite interesting because, of course, um, they start, they actually redesigned the Daleks slightly for the actual film. Um, they had a bigger bottom or something, but they actually used some of those props later on in a couple of the really old episodes because they ran the out chase. of Daleks. The Chase, which is the actually chase, very, yeah, the third one. very, very good episode. I like that one a lot. Um, which was also and, supposed to be the third film. Oh, and I didn't know that. I knew that they wanted to make a third one, but the second one didn't make enough money. But that would have been awesome to actually have seen that. I think that yeah, if they'd I mean, have the, the chase it would have been pretty hard going to make that into a movie, given the number of sets and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um, another actor who, of course, was in the second movie, who um, uh, unfortunately recently passed away, was Bernard Cribbins, and yeah. I, I thought he was very good. Did you like him in the in the second movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't in both films. I don't like the fact that they changed the Ian character into yeah. comedy relief. I didn't really. I didn't really like that at all, but that's possibly on second viewing after I've seen the the William Harton ones. Yeah, um, I mean, I I'm also the... not that. Go on. I'm also not that keen on Peter Cushing's. I mean, he's a legend, but his doddering pr professor persona does my head in. I, I don't. He does it really well, but it's not for me. To be yeah, fair. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it felt more of a, a child. I mean, I know that obviously Dot Two started as a sort of more like a children's program and then it became sort of a family program and, and it's just sort of you know like in the 80s it got quite dark and quite graphic in some of the colin baker eras and sort of stuff like that but this felt like much more of a sort of family children but based two films the way that it was sort of came across and peter cushing was like oh well and he was a bit annoying wasn't he i think uh yeah. you know, it's something about him which just didn't fit as but then he was a different character he was a human inventor um, and I don't know why they couldn't just made the character still alien. Maybe, um, I mean, I was, I was, like Gallifrey and Time Wars weren't actually mentioned until I think the third Doctor series, so it wasn't that. Any idea why you think they made it more of a human? No, I think I think it, it depends on where they're trying to make the film because I got conflicting information. One was selling a film would have been easier to sell abroad than a TV series. So mm -hmm. you sell the film and hope the TV series follows it, yeah. at which point um, that kind of doesn't ring true because why would you change it so much? Mm. You know, yeah, well, you, when you've just made a film with William Hartnell and those guys, you know, yeah. rather than all, uh, uh, make uh, it completely different. And also, of course, it was running at the same time as the William Hartnell era, or actually it yeah. might, have been, might have been Patrick Shanton by then. Uh, no, I think it was still William Hartnell when they released both movies. Um, and I always thought that was a bit of a strange thing. I mean, it was it was a clever ploy to make money out of a cinema rather than a TV show. But, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, do you think they yeah, should I mean, just other got... theories are it was more about Dalek Mania, but I, I don't think Dalek Mania would have started until after this. You know, so they know... wanted to make a Dalek movie rather than a Doctor Who movie. Yeah, I mean, obviously the Daleks... In which case, appeared... that's what they should have done. Yeah, I mean, they appeared in the second story, um, and the, the Daleks obviously took off quite a, quite a lot. But I don't know, as you say, Dalek Mania, when it actually was a big thing. I know it was in the 60s, but whether... Yeah, they've only been in two stories so far, so does it seem likely that that had already kicked off? Yeah. I don't know, I'd have to look. Yeah. And that's it, and that's why they made the two movies based on those two stories, which is interesting as well. But when I, when I kind of watched Doctor Who and the Daleks a couple of weeks ago, I was trying to put myself in the mindset of, of a 60s cinema viewer who's like, well, in a Doctor Who and has gone to see it. Mm. And then it's really disappointing. So first off, yeah, the colour's great. Yeah. But as with all recent, color, you know, when the, when the colour thing started, you got this quite a lot. Lost in Space did it. They go too garish with the colours. They go, yeah. it's like, we can make yeah. the colour. We can make Let's this, look yeah. what we can do. So the, so the yeah. Thals have got green, you know, blue, pale blue skin and, and all of that kind of nonsense. Yeah. Um, the Daleks all being various different colours, which seemed to be for no reason at all. No, um, didn't it really wasn't make specified, sense. was it? No, it wasn't specified. The, the, 
the, the TARDIS itself, the console room, is the worst console room until we got the... Jody the, Whittaker's. <laughs> Well, the modern, all of the modern day ones are crap, really. Um, yeah. As was Paul, Paul McGann's. Yeah, don't like any of them. Oh, don't I like, like the Peter. I like the Peter Capaldi one. Having That's said it. that, uh, QT Gower's new one, QT the, Gower, that kind yes. of white area, mm. that kind of white. Going back to the nice plain white thing, I quite like the look. That that one might be quite good, but I'm yeah. old school, man. I like I like the old console rooms. Oh, yeah, I, I personally like the eighties, uh, the revamped one that Peter Davison's era for the twentieth. Anniversary, they changed it. They updated the console, but the, the the actual set was there for years at that point. I love yeah. that era. I've got I've got like the Paul the, um, McGowan as well. Actually, the, uh, no, I, I hated that as well. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> there there is a website. It's, it's like the TARDIS database or something, and um, mm. it's obviously made pre-modern Who because it doesn't go that far, or at least it didn't last I looked. But mm. that kind of lists details of all the different console rooms and the amount of them there were, even just subtle changes, like putting red lines on the console midway yeah. through Tom Baker's thing. But it also shows all the the exteriors. And oddly enough, it says that the Peter Cushing exterior TARDIS is the closest to what an actual, in terms uh-huh. of dimensions, yeah. to what yeah. an actual police box looked like. Now, to be fair, I've only ever seen one when I was a kid, and it was on the A1, so we'd be belting past it at 80 mile an hour so i didn't really get a good enough look at it i just know that i know that one of the last ones in the country happened to be on the a1 yeah which I, I think um, might be where logopolis was filmed i'm not I, sure. I, I, yeah i love logopolis actually that was the last tom baker story i've seen real ones uh, in glasgow um and that's pretty cool um and it's this really nerdy but the one thing that they always got wrong which i've only recently done is that the roof of the tardis um is supposed to have three steps up and the and not doctor who's only normally had two until the Jodie Whisker era, which has got the three steps as well, and the Peter. Uh, Peter it's it's over two, was... or it's just a flat slope. Which yeah, I hated the Tom Baker. Well. The the Tom Baker one it had in the middle of his uh, era was just flat, and it was it was it was the worst prop yeah. ever. I think it was flat, and it didn't even have the white kind of lantern on top. It had a blue. It had like a kind of you know like an old yeah, and... span round, yeah. like one of those sort of eighties sort of police yeah, car ones. Yeah, yeah, they didn't look good at all. <laughs> I really get nerdy about sort of like um, TARDIS stuff like that. I've always, um, you know, I, I, I don't know why, but it's just what I like about Doctor Who is it's just that it's just such an iconic aspect of Doctor Who is the TARDIS, you know. And, and yeah. I remember um, when the new series was coming on, they almost they had to fight for the right to use a police box because the Metropolitan Police said that no, this is this is our design. This is supposed to, and they actually had some big issue. And eventually, obviously, Russell T Davis won. Um, but imagine Doctor Two without a police box, it, it would be weird. Yeah, yeah, you know no, I mean? it would just be, it'd just be crazy. Crazy. But, I mean, like I said, these movies, it, it is an interesting, I've seen every episode of Doctor Who, every episode that exists, and even the ones where they've, and it is strange seeing these two movies because it's, it's not Doctor Who, but it is, but it's not, and it's a really weird contradiction. And it makes me wonder whether they could, I mean, they would never do a remake now, would they? Of like a separate no, entity. I don't think so. I don't you know think what I mean? so. It makes I mean, again, when I was when I was kind of watching it, I was thinking, so you're you're waiting for the, the you know the, the 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 theme tune, and you just get that weird psychedelic. <laughs> and all that. Then yeah. then you get Peter, you you know Peter Cushion's in it, and you think he's great. He's going to pull off William Hartnell perfect. Oh, and doesn't. then we get that doddering yeah, professor. Yeah, he's thing, just a bit annoying. Which, um, yeah. Strangely enough, he used the same persona back in later on. I think in the seventies in a film called At the Earth's Core with Doug McClure. Oh, I've seen that. Not and for a long time, but I know if you were If you were going to make a Doctor Who movie, yeah. that would have been a better script. Ask all the Daleks and, mm. and do it with that. You know, Doug McClure could have easily... Um, Caroline Monroe could have easily... Or it's not, not oh, even well, Caroline, Ma- Caroline Monroe would be good in anything, wouldn't she? Yeah, Caroline Monroe is Katerina, and, and the other guy is Doug McClure is Stephen, <laughs> and then just don't have a digging machine, have the TARDIS. Boom, yeah. done. The, the, the yeah. movie's all there. Yeah. But I think this is why I think they were trying to cash in on the Daleks, and they mm. should have just gone with an original story. Yeah. Even possibly even be going with that. I know he, I know he hadn't been around. He hadn't been invented in the comics yet. But you know, Dalek the Thal Hunter was it? Was it Thal the Dalek Hunter? Was that his name? Thal something like that. But that, that that could have something like that. But just had the Daleks just in their own film. Because was it was the Kalas and the Thals, wasn't it? Who were actually originally yeah. on. Um... Uh, the Dalek. What's the Dalek home planet? Come, what's going on in my head? What's the Dalek? Scaro. Scaro. That's it. Yeah, exactly. 
Um, yeah, so like I said, it's interesting. I, I one other thing also, I didn't like the little girl in it as well. In both those movies, right? Yeah, yeah there's like yeah, ten year old little kid. Like, well, they got her in it. It's like didn't need the little kid. See, some of them go on. I've had, I've had quite a few conversations with people on Facebook about that a lot of people really hate when there were three companions and I always say well there was originally supposed to be three mm. and to me it makes more sense when there's three and people go oh well you know it's too many people to fit in and I'm like well no because you had you had Ian who was quite intelligent yeah. so he could at least discuss stuff with the TARDIS with with the doctor yeah which gives us our exposition which gives us knowing what's going on and he can figure stuff out and he was quiet because the doctor wasn't he's quite strong and brave and fighty mm. barbara was more of the maternal figure and yeah. and susan was the idiot who just kept tripping over things and yeah, stumbling screaming and, 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 stuff and, and getting yeah, captured yeah, yeah exactly. when you've only got one companion that companion has to fulfill all of those roles so what you have is in this story they're super smart but next week they're an idiot yeah. The week after that, they're brave, running into battle and saying, we must fight. The following week, they're, they're carrying they're the corner, screaming yeah. their eyes yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. And exactly. all that. So yeah. that, to me, is why three three companions, or at least two, works better. Because then you don't have to keep changing who the, who the character is. I'll give you the only companion that pulled off the changes for me was Leela. I thought she did really well in that she could she understood more than she let on, but she could also be naive and silly. And she was also very brave. So I, th I thought her character was the only one that stood alone really well. It's interesting because I'm trying to think of other examples of when we had multiple companions. Um, the 80s, of course, had Nissa, Tegan and Adric at one point. And I actually thought the four of them working together was... I, that's my era I like. That's the era I was growing up. was the Peter Davison era. So, But then you look at the most recent uh, era, well, quite recent, with um, Jodie Whittaker. We had the three, Graham um, and the other two. I can't think of the names. And that didn't work at all. Um, that's because the writing was shit. Well, yeah, and also a bit. Right. Also, the Doctor was almost like just another companion. She didn't stand out at all. I mean, do you think? No. Do you think that it was a combination of Jodie Whittaker being miscast as well as the bad writing, or you know, why did it just not work? You see, it's, it's always difficult to tell whether it's the actor themselves that are guiding the role, or whether the director is saying, "No, no, no, no you have to." Listen, I mean, rumor has it. Christopher Eccleston left because he wasn't being allowed to do his own thing. He was he was very being sp very specifically driven in what he's did. If that yeah. same thing happens to Jodie, then I've only ever seen her that I know of in one other thing, and that's one episode of Black Mirror. Uh, Black Mirror. Yeah. That's all I've ever seen. Oh, I've seen. Yeah, that's the only thing I've seen. And she well. was quite good in that. Yeah, she so was. I don't really she know. She was good. Yeah. We're also different. darkened by the fact that I, for one, did not like the idea of the gender swap. I will say it. I was when it happened. I was just. I was going to get on board with it anyway. I didn't. I've never really liked any doctor since my, my era is Tom Baker. So once Peter Davison, I was like, really, that vet loved him. <laughs> then we got Colin Baker. I really hated him, and I liked until Colin I didn't. Baker. I liked and Colin I really Baker. didn't like Sylvester. I wasn't mad Sylvester until McCoy. I did. Yeah. So I've always not. I've always been treat them with trepidation so once the, the gender swap happened because it was going to happen anyway if it didn't happen now it happened 10 years from now mm, yeah so i was i was prepared to give her the benefit of the doubt but the writing of those episodes was so diabolically crap Chris Chibnall and then mm. and also they, they, they did they did the swap for no reason other than to just to say like ha ha and all that we can do it well had i, mean, I had i been in charge yeah my, my, my daughter always said to me she said i don't want I don't I want strong female characters. I don't want strong male characters played by women. She's she's Look always at, said that. Um Kate Mulgrew <laughs> as Janeway in Star Trek. Yeah. I thought Kate Mulgrew was fantastic in Voyager. I really like her. I thought Seven and I was good. You can have some great well written female, strong female characters. Buffy. Think of, you know, or Ripley. What about um, Sigourney yeah. Weaver? And yeah, there's lots of in yeah. Buffy or whatever. You know what I mean? But the Bionic Woman's ratings were were I think at least three times what the six million dollar man's were. People yeah, thought it was I didn't a bad know that. Show. I don't know. Yeah. I've not seen that. I've got these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose we we have to quickly ask though. I mean, as we're sort of talking about contemporary, obviously Shooty Gatwell's just taken over as the as the fifteenth Doctor. Again, did did it have to be a change of race? Or did, I mean, I don't mind if it's a well written character, but I just start to think, you know, do they actually just change the race just to tick a box and make people happy, or? You know what I mean? What do you think about his casting? I'm, I'm, so, so yes, I'm divided on that one. I don't care that they did it, mm -hmm. and and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't no. really bother me at all. Yeah. But on the other hand, it does bother me. Like the Jodie one, they did it just to be like, 
Ooh, and edgy. They didn't yeah. do it that, for any look kind at this. of. Look what we've done now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, if, if I wanted, if I wanted, for instance, a female Time Lord, mm. how I would have done it is I would have introduced Romana in yeah. the series yeah. uh, with Lala Ward, had her regenerate at the end mm -hmm. in an episode where she regenerates and the Doctor is uh, missing, presumed dead. Have her run her own series in the TARDIS for a, for a year, maybe maybe two, yeah. and then reintroduce the Doctor later on, either with the same character or regenerated again. Then right. he takes his TARDIS and goes off, she takes hers, and then you have two series running concurrently. One with Romana, one with the Doctor. Everybody's happy then. And, well, you know, they, that to me didn't seem like too much of a stretch. They are talking about spin-offs. You know, now that Disney have acquired Doctor Who, which a lot of people are not happy about, so we could be getting a, a, a Doctor Who franchise of, of spin-offs and things like that. And um, you know, I, I'm, you know, the thing is, when a show gets too big and it starts to split off into all these different versions, like Star Trek and Star Wars have done it, and with with mixed results, you know, mind you, I suppose you could think that Doctor Who has already had spin-offs with. Sarah Jane Adventures, which was based more for a younger audience. Torchwood, I couldn't get into at all. Did you, did you see any of those? Yeah, Torchwood was as good as it was bad. I mean, it had really great episodes and it had awful episodes, to be yeah, fair. Yeah. I never bothered with class. And I no, I saw the Sarah first Jane. episode, which had Peter Cavaldi as a crossover. And that's it. I didn't watch any more than that. And that bombed. Apparently, I did really, really badly. It was, it was about, what, four or five years? I don't know. When was that? Several years ago. It's been a while. Um, so I suppose really we should go back to the the, the movie in in question. So yeah. Um, no, I, 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 it's one of those things with Doctor Who. When I talk to people, I can go on for hours about it. It's it's such a sort of big thing. But I I am glad that these movies were made. I, I do think they're an interesting uh, sort of um, different aspect of you know somebody who's made it and think oh yeah we've got the Daleks these are cool let's make it into a movie and let's make them all different colours. And um, yeah, but I, I just think though that what where it didn't go well was the Peter Cushing as the Doctor. I think that was, I don't know whether he was miscast or whether he just didn't get how to play the, the character. I, I, I mean, I didn't read to, somewhere. Uh, I did read somewhere doing my research that William Hartnell was disappointed when he found out he wasn't going to be in the film. I don't know whether there's any truth to that or it's just you know internet bonds making stuff up. But yeah, I definitely read it. They probably um, couldn't do it anyway because the hour. They, and don't forget, back in the day, they would sort of churn out about forty episodes a year or something like that. They used to make so many episodes. Not like nowadays, we'd be lucky to get eight episodes yeah, a season. Yeah, you, you, it's like you read an episode and you think the Doctor's not in this one because he was on holiday during that week. You're like, <laughs> yeah. What? You know? yeah. so, so that's why he got caught and imprisoned because he's not going to be in it for two episodes. Well, and I think then obviously William Hartnell was very ill at the time. I mean, he was still doing it, but he was, his, his health was failing. At yeah, that point. I mean, because uh, so, he came back for, for the three doctors, and he was just on a monitor because he was too ill to actually be shot, which is a shame, really. I like, I like, I like his era, but um, I just think, like you know, with Peter Cushing, when you think of him as Grand Moff Tarkin, or you yeah. know, in, in episodes of Space Nineteen Ninety Nine, or or the Hammer horror movies and stuff like that, I just what is think... it, as a doctor, his mm. Van Helsing character would have fit the part perfectly. Yeah, that that kind of you know because it was that it was that same kind of. I'm right about everything. You're wrong, and all that. Now I know. I know that Van Helsing in one of the one of the Dracula films, in one of the mm. Frankenstein films. I don't know uh -huh. which one. He no. gets a bit rapey with the woman he's living with. So, so we don't really <laughs> want to connect the Doctor to him too much, and all that. But that kind of that character was definitely was definitely more on, on what it should have been and yeah. less humour. One thing that really got me was how. You expect when they, you move, make the move to a movie, you think the special effects are going to be way better. You think, yay! No, no, they weren't. Now, firstly, they couldn't even, the guy who designed these new Daleks couldn't even understand the fact that the lights are supposed to blink in time with them talking. With the sound, yeah. He had them all blinking all the time. So you never knew which one was talking. I never noticed that. I never noticed that. I just look at that when I watch it I think it again. about halfway through the film, because I was mm. looking out for that, they change it. And then you can see that it is the one talking does it but in the background you can see they're all flashing but this one just flashes in time with what he's saying oh, it, okay. it does that i think also you had, they used to have um they used to have set the like um the flashes were sound activated i think mm. i don't i think that there, there is a mechanism where um it will flash if it hears a sound some but obviously in modern ones they just have someone pressing the button i think when um, when they're talking inside the dialogue something like that but the other thing was the weapon as well so the TV effect 
Mm. For its time, for the weapon, was outstanding. It is still a good effect, even to by today's standards. That kind of pfft, negative. I love that. Yeah, negative. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just when they when they did that, so in the film they decided it's, for some bizarre steam, reason. Yeah. yeah. Well, they were going to shoot fire. It was going to be a flame, and okay. then that turned out to be far too dangerous and far too expensive to make not dangerous. And then oh. somebody, obviously they've set fire to something. Somebody's using the old carbon dioxide, so the legend goes, uh -huh. to put the fire out. And somebody said, okay, why don't we just use them? And that's how you got that steam thing, which looked absolutely cra crap. Yeah. And to my mind, it took the, I've never found the Daleks that scary. No, no, honest. me neither. Not really, but it, no. it, it took the Daleks into not even even remotely scary territory. <laughs> not like the not like the laser they've got. You know, that was when they exterminate that. And they kept the sound effects for New Who as well. It's, it's still going. They've still got yeah. the same sound effects, which I like. And that also, this is nerdy, but every Dalek every Dalek episode has a doom, 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 sort of beeping sort of background. So I'm going to put yeah. the sound guy. They still use that. And they've been used that for, since at least the 70s, which I thought. One little quick thing, because we're going to wrap up, actually. I, I know this is about New Who. Um, Davros has been made into um, the new Davros. We saw him recently. What did you think of him? They've changed him. They've so, so him. are we going to change all the Cybermen as well? Because what, the, yeah. that implies that that implies that all that all people with prosthetic limbs are, are inherently evil, doesn't it? Surely. Yeah. And the Santarans are all like midges. So, so now are they going to have to be big tall people? Is that what we're doing? Yeah. Is that what we're saying? Yeah. And all yeah. of that. So basically, Russell you, you T. Agree. Davis yeah. is and always has been a complete ass. He has been since day one. He has. I've and never been so basically says he only come back and sack, Mr. sack uh, Russell Lee Davis, sack the rest of them, and I'll come back. He hates him. He yeah. absolutely hates yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. On, on, on the Dalek thing, there's two things with the Daleks. Firstly, I don't understand why people think they're so scary. There they're was not. a. The, they're the, not. They're again, iconic. in New Who, you get, the, you get the episode where they capture Earth. And you've got that video screen and it's got Sarah Jane and Torchwood with Captain yeah, Jack yeah. and all that. And yeah. as soon as they hear the Dalek voices, they're all pissing themselves, hugging yeah. and kissing. Oh my God, I'm so... You've all, every one of you, defeated the Daleks at least once. And you'll Sarah do it Jane, again. you've done it twice. Yeah. Why are you pissing your pants? I don't understand. No. You know, I, know. It, I, I just don't get it. And to my mind, by now, and I've said this to a few people on, on the internet as well, to, to mixed reviews, mm. the Daleks by now should be undefeatable. Because they strive for perfection and yeah. yet they have the dumbest flaws on the planet so yeah they can fly now but they've got one eye stalk at the front of their head by now they should have a complete 360 degree dome mm. that where they can see everywhere all the time still Literally, the same you design move past still one, you can't design. sneak past one you yeah. can't sneak up on one yeah the, the arm the one sucker arm should be a doc ock style tentacle mm -hmm. that does everything moves moves and does stuff. Yeah, the up, laser yeah. should be something that can fire in any direction like yeah. think like the 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 enterprise phaser array that fires anywhere yeah, it, yeah. it should be something like that the big one invisibility they should have cracked that a long they, time ago i mean they, they had... did crack it the only problem was power they now had, they can they, travel through time which we a, know i was going to say they had a special amazing amount of power they had a special weapons dalek once which was in in the in yeah. the 80s, and that was quite cool yeah, that, yeah. That, but we only saw we have, we have seen it in New Who, but it never does anything. It just sits there. Yeah. Much. But the but the the whole thing with the invisibility is, all we're told is it doesn't work because it takes so much power. But we mm. know they can travel, not just with ships themselves. Yeah. So they've obviously licked the power issue. So by now, a, the, the the last thing you hear should be a Dalek killing you, and then they should have taken over the entire universe by now. I don't I don't understand why their desire cosmetic only no. oh now they're all gold and their lamps have changed if there is one thing that the daleks would not be doing as they change mm. is cosmetic changes even when they go into that stupid paradigm machine and we got the dumbass daleks mm. and all that even them all right so we've made them bigger and fatter um and a different color okay how does that make them better than what they were before i don't get it now it we've got We've got one minute left of Zoom, so shall we carry on? Or, um, yeah, to, can we? All right, so we'll come back in a minute. Uh, obviously, we're going to reset Zoom, and we'll carry on. This is a good discussion, so we'll be right back. All right, sorry about that. We're back now, and we were interrupted by Zoom. We're having a very good conversation about the design of the Daleks, and Malcolm isn't that impressed. So um, what else did you have to say about the design of the Daleks that you don't like? And how should they change it? Um, this the whole concept of the Daleks, just that 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 Mark One travel suit that that Davros comes up with, it just doesn't seem fit for purpose for what he wants to do. Take over the. Whole. 
you know, I, I know obviously the, the idea of Davros coming up with it retconned it later on, but mm. even if you go back to the initial the initial Daleks when they come out, this was supposed to be their big survival suit and yeah. what have you. Yeah. And yet it's a thing that glides along the floor that runs on static electricity mm. and all that, which is how they get defeated in the first film. Yeah. Um, that's right. And it just doesn't seem to make sense. Yeah, I, I mean, just, I don't know. As a, as a design, I just don't get why everybody thinks it's so scary. It's literally not. Yeah, it's it's more iconic than scary. Um, I mean, it, it's weird. I mean, with Doctor Who, the, the two biggest adversaries, really, well, three, but Master as well. The Master, the Cybermen and the Daleks, I think, are the top big three ones. Um, but I don't know, it's, it's weird. I mean, I suppose... I mean, do you think the Daleks would ever get redesigned, which which makes sense in the fact that they are a bit limited into what they're doing? Or do you think they'll always just be the similar shapes, exterminate, exterminate? Kind they will of thing? always be similar because, like the TARDIS, it's now become iconic. Yeah. When you see a Dalek, you want to be able to know it's a Dalek. Yeah. And if you think the slating that the Cybermen got from all the different every time we see the cybermen they've changed slightly not so much in recent years but certainly in yeah. the early years they'd yeah. always changed they'd always yeah. modified they'd always got better yeah but nowadays people just think no they don't like it and i don't like the new who designed cybermen i think they're just, just daft they redesigned you who cybermen three times now i don't know if you know that they they yeah. they appeared with uh, david Tennant's second season then they've got revamped during Matt Smith's era, and now they've been revamped again during the Jodie Whittaker. They look a bit more like the 80s Cybermen, which I actually think was my, again, I, I don't know why, I just like the 80s Doctor Who a lot. I like the 80s Earthshock Cybermen. That was always my favorite design for some reason. Yeah, so I think the first redesign is because they're not Cybus technology Cybermen anymore. So the first yes. time we see them, they're parallel universe. That's the second right. time we see them, they're those coming from that universe. That's the next right. time they see them, they're our universe ones, so they don't have the C on their chest. That's it. Yeah, you see, you know your stuff, you see, and they're exactly right. Um, but yeah, uh, it would be interesting, though, if they had done that in Classic Who with the Daleks, uh, if they had slowly redesigned them over the course of decades. Um, and like I said, they didn't really do that. Not really. I mean, they're slightly updated, but they're still the same basic shape. We showed, like we said, they, they did use that in the movie, just slightly different lights, but a bit bigger, and the bottom bits were a bit bigger as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, Doctor Who, uh, the movies, um, what would you rate them out of 10? What would you, um, similar or I mean, the second one you prefer? The movies, the movies, the movies. Um, the first one, I'm going to go with a six because uh -huh. it was ambitious to do what they did. I just think they did it very badly. Uh -huh. um, the second one is slightly better. I'd probably go six and a half with that one. The, I think the only real fault with the second one is the comic relief. They still try to do the mad comic relief stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, there was a bit I when really um, like that. Bernard Cribbins was a Cyberman, not Cyberman. He was, a, he was one of those... Um, Robotron. Uh, Robotron. And Robo like, Man or something. And he was eating pip, uh, sort of pills in this sort of like weird kind of like yeah. canteen which thing. Which is, like, which is in the original Hartnell one. Is it? But it's not it's... played for laughs. Oh, I don't remember that. I mean, it's been a long time since yeah, I've seen yeah, it. Okay. Maybe the scene itself is slightly different, but there is he, he does end up disguised as a as a Robo Man in it. Yeah, okay. And it's just yeah. not played for laughs. Okay. So you, you think that might be a thought that they just try to make it more of a sort of family friendly comedy even though the comedy didn't really work and didn't sort of, yeah. sort of fit in. I think that, you know, it's weird with Doctor Who that it it, it does sort of jump sort of uh, genres, unless it's more horror, well, not really horror, but it tries to be a bit more horrific, um, comedy in other episodes. Um, but like I said, it, it is interesting, though, that they just basically got the two stories from the original show and thought, right, we want to make this into a movie. And, and what they did, I mean, I was going to rate it myself. I would rate the first one a six. I'd rate the second one a seven, so similar to you. I think I thought the seven, the second one was, it was all right. You know, it's definitely a film I can go back to occasionally, not too often, but um, and I think really, what makes it for me is actually not Peter Cushing. It's probably Bernard Cribbins, because I, I think I really like Bernard yeah. Cribbins, and I think he was, he was. I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing him as a doctor, quite frankly. I, mean, I know that at that point the doctor was an old man, but um, yeah, it's it's really funny how he's. Um, association with uh, Doctor Who. Uh, well, he's one of the few people who's appeared, obviously, as different characters in, in one of these movies and the canon Doctor Who as well. Did you hear, apparently, that they only 
50th anniversary, there was a bit, um, I think it was um, in Unit or something, where they had all these pictures of all the classic Doctor's companions behind that one scene. I think it was with um, Kate Stewart, and they wanted to have an image of Peter Cushing or something from the movie, and because of uh, copyright, whatever, it's not some issue, they weren't allowed to show that. And that would have been fascinating if they'd have actually sort of had a, a kind of wink, a sort of nod to the one of the original movies in an image in... Well, there is, there is talk that the, the Cushing films are now canon, because um, I, I, don't oh. know, I don't know if it's... I don't know if it's a book, one of the big Finnish audios, or one of the reconstructed animated things, right. um, basically has them walk past the poster for the film, something like that. And oh, the yeah. idea that I, I don't know exactly what it is because I thought it was horseshit myself, but it was. <laughs> it's like the, the the Doctor during his time on Earth has yeah. done a home style telling of some of his stories to people, and some guys made a film out of them, and that's what the films are. Personally, I think it's bullshit, but yeah, a lot I do. of people yeah. cling to it like the greatest thing since sliced bread. Yeah, but don't forget, they keep retconning and adding new Doctors into, yeah. you know, I mean, yeah. now we've got um, another Doctor um, in the uh, Jodie Whittaker era. We never saw her before. And then we've had the And, and yet we doctor. saw William Hartnell literally choose the TARDIS, steal the TARDIS, With, uh, and yeah. we saw the point where it got stuck as a police box, yeah. yet this new Doctor, she already has a police box. So how does that work? But we don't know where she what just, we don't know where she fits in though, do we? We don't know what era she fits in. It's all supposed to be previous. Well that makes no sense. I I assumed it was in, yeah. it was just something we didn't see between William Hartnell and I, I, well, the shape of her TARDIS is a sort of sixties shape, going back to TARDISes again. Mm. So I would assume that it was somewhere between William Hartnell and John Pertwee's era. But it's not. Yeah, been no, I'm, I'm sure they say she's supposed to be. Pretty, she's one of the run of him before before the doctor had his memory wiped and what have you. So yeah. there was some nonsense like that. To be fair, I'd I'd lost so much interest in the show. I wasn't really listening. <laughs> it's, I gained most of my information from uh, from from reading the the arguments so, and the rants between people on Facebook. So have you seen all of New Who, or have you just, or like you said, just sort of like I can. I've made four or five attempts to watch the last series. Mm. And I can't do it. It's oh, just um, yeah, so, yeah, the so bad. Yeah, okay. But did you see the yeah, last episode it, of Whitaker when she regenerated into Yes, David I, I that thought one. that was all right. I thought that was a pretty good one. I quite like that one. Really? That was one of the better ones of her era, and that's saying something. If you didn't like it, then I wouldn't bother watching the rest of it. Yeah, no, no. I do quite fancy to see the, the fact they've redesigned the Sea Devils again and blah, 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 but no, it's just. Yeah. Rubbish. yeah, I don't like. It. I even one thing that even really bugs me, and I don't know why it does. I don't like the fact she now calls him master. You know, it, it, before it was always the master, and the doctor almost never refers to him. He, he he talks about him to other people and says the master does this, but he never calls him by name. He never says to him master, and now that, he does. Or now that was, Whitaker does, and that's really annoying. Yeah, because that was changed in the TV movie in nineteen ninety six. That was when Eric Roberts was it, and uh, Master is my name. He was a terrible master. He was he was not. Yeah, a yeah, yeah. Master. yeah. Oh God, yeah. Although still better than John Sims and Missy, to be fair. Uh, I, quite, I, I, I quite I quite like John. I like John. I like John Sims when he was the dying. Hated thing. everything about did, 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 John like Sims. That. Was no? a, he was a version of the Master written by somebody who's never seen an episode of Doctor Who in their life and had no idea who the Master was. That's what John Sims' character was. So you know what I'm going to ask you next, don't you? Bullshit. I'm going to ask you who is your favourite Master. And I, I know you, what you're going to say. Go on. Who's your favourite Master? Peter Anthony Pratt. Anthony Ailey. Which one? Peter Pratt. Peter Pratt. Wasn't he the one... Hang on. He was the one that was... Wasn't he in... Um, the episode before Anthony Ainley took over, he was the was he the disfigured one, wasn't he? Peter he was Pratt. two before that, yeah. So he was the original. Oh, he was the one, one yeah. The that's Assassin. right. Oh, uh, yeah. I saw it. So what? Yes. What I what I liked about him was he had totally gone over the edge. So previously, Roger Delgado's master was. I iconic. thought you were going to say Roger Delgado, actually. but mm, he was iconic. But I, I never liked the idea of, oh, I've got you at my mercy, but I'm not gonna kill you because the show can't go on if i do he always does I never that. Really like that he always does there's, that. 
there's no real way around it. But what I liked about this one is now he's disfigured, now he's lost everything, all his regenerations have run oh, out, yeah. and he is proper, full on, balls out evil. He yeah. literally will do anything. He'll destroy the whole of fucking Gallifrey. He didn't even see. He, he didn't even see his face though. It was like a puppet face, wasn't it? It wasn't like really. Yeah, well, it was makeup. It was an actual guy. Oh, makeup. so yeah. I mean, he, he didn't realise, did he? He sort of like had. Uh, yeah, no, no. One was like a big golf ball or something. That's right. And then we saw another actor in the Keeper of Trakan, and that Which, was not. While, you know, while I don't really like his version of it, I do like the fact that he's slightly more healed. Which gives you yeah, which gives yeah. you the effect of that the uh, that whatever he stole from the Eye of Harmony allowed him to so to partly, start yes, to, yeah. to regenerate or, yeah. or come back again. So I did like that, although I didn't like the character. I didn't think he was very good. No. Um, okay. He's very big on big finish, I'm told, but I can't really get into them. I've not, I've not either. Um, I don't know why. I'm not. It's the same with animated stuff. It's like with um, so I know we're going off topic slightly. But what the hell we can um it's like like the star wars they've got some animated series i've watched them they're okay i just i'm, I'm 51 years old now i don't get excited by watching cartoons now. yeah i mean I, I watched the pilot of um prodigy and oh, i can I see why the kids love it yeah i can I see why that. the kids love it it wasn't for me no i, I saw one episode lower I decks i just can't yeah. get into no lower decks now everyone says that's the best thing ever from star trek it's star trek the simpsons i don't i don't want that in star trek yeah i mean people say to me like my cousin said to me keep watching it until it starts to get when yeah. it starts to do like all the pop culture references and all that i just yeah. doesn't work for me i it's funny i, I, I did like see... the strange new worlds crossover though yeah that was and what about the musical to my did mind you, did you like the musical uh, no, the, 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 the crossover was one of only two episodes in the entire second season I actually liked. The rest of it I thought was rubbish. Yeah, I mean, the first season was much better than the second season. Yeah. And they're, they're filming the third at the moment. Um, and what do you think about lower, um, I'll say this, the Star Trek Academy, Starfleet Academy series coming? Yeah, I mean, I used to like Beverly Hills 90210, but I just... Yeah, I'm Star not, Trek 90210. I'm past that now. No. You know, Star Trek Grange Hill. Do, 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 do. Do. You know what, every three years we're going to have a complete new cast. Yeah. I, just, um, no, I, don't, I, don't see, I don't really care what they go through at the Academy. How, how often can they put the, the, the cadets in peril before the Federation realises that Starfleet Academy is like the fucking worst thing since since Hitler and yeah. shuts the damn thing down. Yeah. You know, how often can we have these kids? So if they're not in peril every week, then it's going to be who they're fucking every week. And it's just, I, I don't see it working. I don't, I don't get it. You know? No, I mean, Harv Bennett actually came up with this idea back in the 80s after Star Trek IV. I think they, they wanted to do a, a, a Star Trek, a Starfleet Academy, something. I don't know if it's going to be a film or a TV show. It obviously didn't work out. Um, but, you know, um, I think the best... I mean, I know, we, like I said, we're just going off topic, but for Star Trek, contemporary Star Trek, for me, the only thing that's really worked, and I loved it, was Picard Season 3. I just thought that was yeah, really, yeah. really good. But as, I think, as we said at the time, the only reason that worked was because it kept harking back. It very well harked back to the beginning. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything. It tied everything up. It was a great finish. Now they're talking about like uh, making a film with Picard. It's like, let them die. They they, that, they could not have had a better send-off than they did. Yeah. You know, they I, can't I, I don't... Done. Much as Discovery, no, sorry, Undiscovered Country was a great send-off for the original crew, and mm. you fucked it up royally when you brought... Shatner back for the the other death in fucking generations. Don't do it. Just leave Picard where he is with, with yeah. that final the Enterprise leaving. That That's was it. that was great. Just don't don't do it. Don't do any more to it. So do you do you think they should just finish making all these new sort of shows and we should just enjoy? I quite I quite okay. like the idea of Star Trek Legacy with mm -hmm. Seven Me too. Me too. Because she's great. The only thing I would say is in the opening kind of monologue before we get the opening titles. We just need to see Jerry Ryan sigh, pull her phaser out, and shoot that stupid fucking number one bitch in the face. Uh, Ruffy, dissolve Ruffy. Her. Yeah. yeah, yeah, literally, she just <laughs> dissolves into nothing, and then she makes somebody else fucking first officer. Then the show will be brilliant. But as long as that Raffi's in it, it can only ever be shit. You don't like it? No. I mean, part of the reason season three worked was because she was only in it for about five minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know it's it's funny. I mean, the, the the new characters they brought in for Picard season one, none of the characters were very good, very likable. Um, which is well, that's weird. The character that would have been quite likable, they killed her off in the first episode, and I know she appears as other versions of herself later on, but the original one that gets killed in the first episode was the, what, best the one version. of the two, one of the two twins. You mean? Yeah, one of the two twins. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, it was weird the way they killed her off. Anyway. Yeah, and I, I I like the idea of the the Romulan soldiery bloke thing that gets killed off in the second season. I quite like the idea of him, but other than that, it was a bit shocking. Yeah, I know. Well, I suppose really I mean, this year, you know, we've had new Star Trek, new Doctor Who, new Star Wars, uh, a new Alien movie coming as well, and a TV show. So it is funny, and obviously we talk about this whole movie, but it is funny how a lot of the, the big names in science fiction that we grew up with are still being made in, in a new form. And it just makes me wonder whether, you know, you know, Hollywood has sort of run out of ideas because they well, just, you know what I mean? You see this all the time in Facebook groups where they go back and people always go, oh, Hollywood's run out of ideas, oh, there's no originality. And mm -hmm. that's not true. The remakes and reboots and sequels make up a very, very small part of Hollywood's output, mm -hmm. but they are the ones that get the most marketing. So yeah, the only most attention, really which is why, on. yeah, yeah, they're yeah. the ones that cinemas will go for when it comes when they get in their pick of what do we need for the new season? They will go for them because they're guaranteed money. People are going to go and see them no matter what. People will yeah. go, so they are guaranteed breadwinners. Whereas the more kind of under the radar stuff, like the Barbie movie and Oppenheimer oh, and all that kind of stuff, yeah. they do, they do well, but they're, they're they they don't get nearly as much nearly as much credit for them. Well, this is why. So, um, this is why I like doing stuff with Martin um, because he he tells me about lots of things I've never heard of, and we review all sorts of. I mean, I, I I'm pretty well knowledge with science fiction, but sometimes and every time I come across a film, I'll say, Martin, have you seen that? I said, yeah, I've seen that. I, I've never, I've hardly ever recommended a film to him that he's not seen before me. And one of these days I'll do that. And you, you know, it's 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 weird, isn't it? That some films are great, but they just don't make it. They just don't get in, in the attention that they deserve. Plus there's, there's a very obvious thing. They tried to do something new with Picard, yet the show didn't really take off until they went back and redid. That's you know, because the Patrick three. They Stewart. Went back. Well, they, they, they went back. Patrick Stewart but said then it was he... massively successful. Yeah. Then but... we had, um, the new Doctor Who, the three spin-off Doctor Who, the first two films were shit. The th no, they're not the films, the, the, the three-part Christmas nonsense. Yeah. The first two were rubbish. The mm. third one, from what I can work out, most people loved it. And it and again, it went back to things before. Unit was back. Yeah. Bonnie Langford was back. You know, it, it, you, we can keep saying that they've run out of ideas, but the most successful stuff is when they look back and they go back and they bring other stuff up rather than trying to change it, rather than trying to piss on it, rather than trying to stick two fingers up at it. When they yeah. embrace it, it does well. Yeah. And they nobody can deny that. And and this is why I suppose the two Doctor Who movies, um, they just literally just wanted to retell in a different form those original stories in a more of a cinematic kind of way. Yeah. Rather than doing something completely original it based in something to do with Doctor Who. They just literally just copied those stories made it a bit more made it in color overdid the color overdid the Daleks and everything um just because it was easier than doing something sort of new yeah, which might have been money. people were gonna go and see it so it's not it's not actually different then than it is now it's obviously a it's a repeating trend as time goes by and i assume that will carry on um well i think we i've pretty much covered it i think there's um nothing much else to say about this but i'm glad you've obviously seen it reviewed it with me thank you very much for coming on malcolm can you come back at some no point worries. Yeah, definitely, because we're definitely doing Blake 7. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you might have to wait about 10 years until I finally get that. I will watch it, I promise. I will yes, try to watch done. this. Just, do you know what, right? I, because where I work now, all I do is either work on models or sit watching TV all day. That's oh, literally okay. all I do. I can binge watch a show in, I mean, I'll watch 10 episodes of a series in one day. Oh, I, I, just, I do a lot I of driving. My job's involved mm. a lot of driving, so I can't do that. And I, I, that sounds like a pretty good job, though. Just sort of like, you know, yeah. be able to, yeah. And you get paid for it as well. You lucky thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, if you're, in the, if you're in the old car with a podcast, I cannot recommend um, The End of the World with Josh Clark enough. You the must, you must, must, must. The End of the World with Josh Clark. See All what right. you think on that. It takes and a little I, bit used to getting getting used to his voice, but the information in it is brilliant. And I recommend to you uh, two films. Well, two things I love, and one of them we haven't reviewed yet, but Martin has. First of all, is a short story with Kurtwood Smith called Twelve One PM. It's literally mm -hmm. a guy who's in, he's having a lunch break and he's stuck in the same hour and he can't get out of it. And it's a re uh, we have reviewed it. Yeah, that's really. I think it's on YouTube. You can just just. Look. Google that. And the other one I quite like, which um, I'm not sure Martin's seen, but I, a lot of people don't like it. I like it. It's a film called Miracle Mile um, from the late 80s. It, it stars, it's got Denise Crosby in it. Uh, it's got a couple of other people. And it's just basically 
it's not sci-fi, but it's this guy who t- he answers a phone call outside, and he realizes that LA is going to be nuked within an hour, and he's got to get out of the city and try. And he's just got a new girlfriend, and it's it's just one of those movies which I've always loved. You know, some some movies you just connect with, even though people are like, oh, it's all right. But I recommend those two. So if you get a chance, check those out, and um, no might be worth it. There's Thank a TV you, mate. series called Severance as well. If you Severance. want something new and original, give that a go. Severance. Yeah, that's a good I... one to review. I'd like to see what you think of that one. We also want to review the new Dune movies. I've seen the first one. I've not seen the part two yet. Have you seen either of those? I've seen the first one. I haven't seen the second one. Yeah, because I, I think that might be worth checking out. I heard that's quite good. I'm not going to see Ghostbusters. Um, what's it? Frozen Empire. That sounds like it's terrible. Everyone's panned it. Yeah, no, I'll wait until I can see it on the little screen. Yeah, that's what I think they will do, do as well. OK, Malcolm, thank you very much. Thank you for uh, joining me. We'll be back again. Hopefully next week with Martin. I think he's back next week. If not, we'll, we'll be definitely be back soon. And Malcolm will be back with us at some point soon too. Yeah. Cheers, Malcolm. Right. Thank you very cool. much. Cheers. Bye-bye.